Hi everyone and welcome back to the Tarot channel. So today we've got a brave new guitar to unbox from a brand called Kramer that you have probably already heard about and that's made for rock hard. Um, it's a brand that I have never played before. Uh, in 27 years I have never had a Kramer in my hands. So I thought since this guitar has a good reputation it's time to discover it, play it, demo it, review it so everybody knows uh, how good or how bad it is. It's interesting that for the price you have a mahogany body, you have a maple neck and you have a rosewood fingerboard. So let's unbox this guitar and discover it together. Here we go! Alright, here it is with a uh, <laughs> very amazing uh, little... What's this thing made for? I mean, what does this protect? I don't know. Anyway, uh, okay, first things first. This thing feels heavy. Um, I would not be surprised if it was 4 kilograms. Uh, I will have, of course, to check it out. Okay, um... Apart from that, well, of course, something totally white with this black binding that surrounds it. Looks okay. You've got a very classic uh, neck heel. Okay. Um, keep in mind that Kramer now belongs to the Gibson Galaxy. And, of course, you have something that's more modern looking. I mean, it's got pretty much the same shape as my LTD. You see, 256. Okay. If I do compare these two, well, very close, okay, with the same belly cut, even though it's not easy to see it on a white guitar, but you've got a belly cut as well, okay, so this guitar feels pretty heavy, um, the way the Floyd Rose has been installed is absolutely strange. <laughs> <laughs> gotta say, uh, you, you need to check it out by yourself, Carl, you know. The Floyd Rose is absolutely not parallel to the body of the guitar, but it's very high above uh, the, the body of the guitar. I don't know if that's due to the shape of the guitar, I guess it is, because if it was lower, well, the strings would hit the fretboard and you could not play this guitar. Uh, kind of weird. But okay, so this is not an original Floyd Rose, as you can see. Uh, it's a Kramer Floyd Rose. Okay, so under Floyd Rose license, of course. Uh, apart from that, well, you've got something pretty simple with three-way blade, splitable pickups, interesting. So volume and tone. You've got an excess to the screws here if you want to set and adjust the tension, so that's okay. Oh, and that's a very interesting point. You've got your Allen wrenches that are here, held by some little screws. Okay, nice. Good point. Uh, the neck feels pretty wide, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised, I didn't check it out, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was a 43 millimeters nut. Okay. Uh, the frets, no problem here. Oh, sounds like those frets have been polished. Pretty interesting. When you think that the price of this guitar is 349 euros on retail on Toman. Uh, yeah, good job so far. Uh, the shape of the neck is, again, something from Gibson, so what do they call it? I think it is, it's a slim tapper, uh, something like that. It feels like, uh, yeah, something like a D-shape. Uh, okay, it looks pretty flat, that also due uh, to the fact that it's pretty wide on the nut and the so, of course, in the 12th and 15th and 17th fret. Uh, yeah, feels comfortable. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's not in tune. Oh, yeah, I was a bit sure. Uh, the stock strings are 9 to 42. Uh, I don't know what brand. 
uh, probably uh, no brand. Uh, I'm not gonna keep the string gauge, you have to know it. Uh, I'm never playing on such a light string gauge, I really don't feel comfortable on such light string gauge. So I'm gonna move to 10 to 52, very probably, and I will have to adjust pretty much everything, but uh, I already knew it <laughs> before I decided to have this guitar coming home. Um, but okay, so far it looks pretty good. Now time to uh, change strings, adjust the guitar, listen to how it sounds through the demo in the mix. And uh, okay, it's supposed to be made to rock hard. Mm. I'm not gonna do some hard rock stuff, but I think I'm not gonna do something smooth and soft either. Okay, so <laughs> let's go for the demo in the mix right now.
Okay, so what you've just heard is this Kramer Assault 220, and it sounds really good. Of course, I'm going to tell you about what you couldn't see here through the demo, but just before we go there, I would like to ask you to subscribe to this channel if it's not already done. Leave thumbs up, leave comments, share on socials. I would like uh, to go to 5,000 subs, so if you can please help me, that would be really nice. Now, if you order anything from my partner, Toman, this guitar, when it's back in stock, or anything else, please use my partner link that's going to be in the video description down below. You have to know that when you click my link, you are on the German page of Toman, so you just have to click on the German flag to choose your own language, save, and there you are. Now, if you want to make 100% sure that you are really on my partner page, you can use the second link that's in the video description. It's going to lead you to a list of highly recommended gear, recommended by me, of course. Uh, there you will see my banner, my logo, and pretty much everything that identifies the channel. And then you know for 100% sure that you are really on my partner page and nowhere else. Okay, so thanks in advance for your help. And now let's go back to this Kramer guitar. Uh, I'm not going to start with the headstock for once. Uh, I'm going to talk about the spec sheets. Um, if you go to the Kramer guitar website, uh, you will realize, as I did, uh, that you don't have a lot of information about what this guitar is made of. For instance, there's no way to know what this fingerboard is made of. Uh, so, since you don't have the information by Kramer directly, you go to see the distributors, uh, Toman and others, and, uh, well, the opinions are really <laughs> different. Uh, some distributors say that this is a rosewood fingerboard. Thomas says this is an ebony fingerboard. Okay. Um, looks very, very dark for some rosewood. But I also have this uh, LTD ECL56. This is a rosewood fingerboard. And it looks pretty dark as well. Okay, so I have taken pics of the neck of this one, of this one, and of my uh, Schecter uh, C1 Exotic Star. And the C1 Exotic Star for sure has an ebony fingerboard. So I'll let you take a look at these three put together. Um, it's not very easy to see, but for me, this is ebony. This is not rosewood because there are almost no pores and generally on rosewood fingerboards you have several little pores on and on and uh, I really think it's an ebony fingerboard for a guitar that's uh, 349 on Toman, 399 if you really want to buy it on Kramer Guitars.com, yeah, come in sucker, um, <laughs> why not? Uh, but okay, really for the price, uh, an ebony fingerboard uh, the only example I have in mind is a Harley Benton EX84 modem that comes with a Maxar Ebony fingerboard. It's 319 uh, with Rosal Active pickups. But apart from that, I have no idea of another brand that will offer Ebony fingerboard for this price. Okay, uh, that being said, um, let's go with the headstock. So you've got a classic black headstock with a white logo. On a white guitar with black hardware, it matches correctly. I would prefer, of course, to have a white headstock with a black Kramer logo, but okay, you don't always have what you want. Um, you also, well, I've already mentioned it during the unboxing, but it's really nice that you have your tools at the reach of your hands wherever you go, thanks to those little screws that held your heart in wrenches. Pretty cool. Uh, the tuners, uh, no brand, doing the job, okay, no problem. And since you have a guitar with a Floyd Rose, you will not use them as often as if it was a hardtail. Um, the locking nut is doing the job as well, have nothing to reproach with it. Uh, the neck, as already mentioned as well, um, nothing sharp on the fret. Body job has been very nicely done, again. Things you don't find that often on such an affordable guitar. And this neck, well, first you have to know, and that's really something that I've been surprised with, you are into the Gibson Galaxy, okay? Gibsons are single cut guitars with a 24 three quarter inches scale. That historically are uh, what Gibson has included in pretty much every guitar they have made at least a uh, long time ago. 
On this one, you have a 25 and a half inches scale. That's the Fender scale. <laughs> Having this on a brand that does belong to Gibson is really surprising and it's very cool. I like that. I feel more comfortable, even though I have not very long fingers, I always feel more comfortable on a 25 and a half inch scale. And on this one, the balance is pretty good. Uh, the shape of the neck is okay. I love this case pin uh, slim taper C, even though for me it's not a C shaped neck, it's a D shaped neck. I don't know why they call it uh, a C, but it's pretty flat here. You don't have very wide shoulders, so it's not a U. If it was a C, it would not be that flat here. So for me, it's really a D shape. Very, very nice. Um, the 43mm nut is really great for playing everything you want. Um, the flat neck is great for, you know, it's called case bed, so I mean it's made for shredders and really shredding on this thing is okay, but playing chords like this is okay as well, since you have a 12 inches radius. Pretty, pretty cool. And really, the access to the 24 fret despite this super big hill is not so bad, because you know, A bit more complicated, of course, on the low E, but uh, yeah, you can shred pretty easily on this thing and a really good, good guitar, uh, really for the price. The playability is really very interesting, especially if you love this shape with flat uh, back, sure you're gonna love this one. Okay, um, you've got the parts here, you've got a very loose uh, tone part as a split function works, but uh, you have to know it before I play the guitar alone. On this guitar, uh, the split function doesn't work on the bridge pickup. To be honest, it has worked only once, and uh, I thought not uh, it would happen, so I didn't record anything with the, the bridge pickup splitted. But since then, uh, the split works on the neck pickup. I think it works when I'm in the middle position, but it doesn't work with the bridge pickup played alone. Okay, too bad, but I do prefer having this problem on the bridge pickup than on the neck, of course. Uh, the grip of the volume pot is okay, the toggle works pretty well. Um, the Floyd Rose, we're gonna talk about it again when I play the guitar alone. It's doing a good job, uh, it's not perfect, but it's, uh, it's okay. And uh, even though this guitar is pretty heavy, for um, four kilograms, it's um, okay. Something, if you want to play standing for three hours of a gig, uh, maybe you're going to find it's a bit hard. But for playing sitting, it's okay, since really the balance, I mean, okay, really very good balance. Uh, to be honest, I have had a lot of fun playing this guitar. So now is the time to listen to this guitar played alone, clean, dirty. I'm gonna try uh, the parts, I'm gonna try the Floyd Rose, and I'll come back for the conclusion. So here we go.
And so, yeah, one thing that has really stunned me when I have played this guitar for the first time is how much low end you have from this bridge pickup. I was really not expecting that. And I think that for playing on low tuning, you have enough high end. You've got that really fat sounding chugs. Uh, I would not use it for playing thrash metal or this, or this kind of things because I do prefer having a tighter sound on the bass uh, for thrash metal but for this kind of heavy stuff uh, with a kind of metal core, death metal, uh, nightwishy uh, inspiration uh, great great sounding pickups. Uh, they come with Alnico 5 magnets uh, you sense that uh, these are not the best magnets you could find but not bad at all and again, 349 euros, 99 if you go to Kramer website, but if you go anywhere else, 349. Uh, really, I love those pickups, especially uh, the bridge pickup, even though I think uh, the neck pickup is the exact same. Uh, and that's one of the reasons that make me think uh, that I should really keep this guitar and uh, maybe do the little bit of improvement it does deserve, because as you have seen, the Floyd Rose does not exactly come back in tune after uh, a lot of dive bombs and this kind of things, even though that's generally not what I'm playing a lot, but um, I have to consider this. But I think that this guitar with a better Floyd Rose would be interesting. And a point that I have not mentioned, but you have already seen it during the unboxing, the Floyd Rose is way above the body of the guitar. So, if I decide to install a detuner, well, I can still have my Floyd going this way and not only down, but I can also do it up and it will not um, encounter the body of the guitar. And that's something I have in mind since I have noticed this point. Uh, yeah, maybe that's a good guitar without a recess Floyd Rose to install a detuner and uh, the detuner is gonna work uh, if I install the Goto Floyd Rose I have in mind because it's under Floyd Rose license so it's gonna be okay and uh, really something I'm really thinking about. Okay, only you know, for the price uh, I cannot think of a better guitar. Uh, even Harley Benton, is, okay, the Specsi and Harley Benton guitars in this price range are better because in general, you've got uh, stainless steel frets. Uh, sometimes you have not that good pickups. I mean, the Russell pickups are not so good. The Tesla are better, but uh, for the kind of tone I'm searching for, uh, the Teslas would not work. And if you want to go for some EMG uh, active pickups, um, the price is generally uh, beyond 400. So um, yeah, even Harley Benton is not doing such a great guitar to play for the price. And Kramer is not a distributor brand, you know, so I don't know how they make such a guitar with, uh, I mean, it's real um, mahogany, it's not Eastern mahogany, for sure it's real mahogany on the body, on the neck. You've got an ebony fingerboard, I'm really sure it's a, it's an ebony fingerboard. Um, I love extra jumbo frets and that's what we have. Uh, I mean, everything feels really good on this guitar, so what convinced me is, of course, the tone and how easy it is to play, how comfortable it is to play because of the shape of the neck and because of the balance of the guitar. Um, really, I was about to say, I'm gonna keep it. But I have realized that Kramer uh, has also made an Assault Plus, which is potentially the grand sister of this one, uh, that comes with uh, a purple color, and you know I'm a sucker for purple guitars, uh, that comes with Seymour Duncan SH4, SH2 pickups, and with the Floyd Rose uh, Series 1000, so a real one. And really before I decide I want to keep this one, I want to try the Kramer Assault Plus. So that's going to be my next video, it's going to be the chapter 2 in this uh, Kramer series, uh, the review of the Kramer Assault Plus. And for chapter 3, I'm going to make a side-by-side -side comparison between this and the Kramer Assault Plus. Okay, well, I think I've said it all uh, for this time, so thanks for watching and see you next time!